This is my 1989 BMW 525i and by the end of this video you are going to find out just how you could own it. But before we get into that, we're going to have to rewind real quick and figure out just exactly how we got here. At the end of 2022, I decided it was finally time to bite the bullet and I should be definitely going self-employed with Gresswell's full time. The idea of running a garage on my own is kind of something I've always dreamt about and to be honest, it's now or never. And going into 2023, I knew that I was going to have to make a ton of sacrifices and one being not being able to spend a single penny on any of my own cars, which was kind of a shock to reality because ever since I started earning my own money, it has all gone into cars and for me to not spend any money on my own cars, yeah, it's unheard of. And I was okay with that because I already own one of my favorite ever cars and it is this 1984 Toyota Mark II. And this car was gonna get me through the year. I wouldn't have to touch anything to it. This car ticks all the boxes. It looks good, it sounds good. And most of all, it's a pretty good car to showcase my work and potentially bring in a bunch of customers. So I'm more than happy to drive this car around for the rest of the year and not spend a single penny on it. It blew up and the engine is absolutely toast. And with this car being the only one in the UK, there is no parts, there's no replacement. There's not going to happen. It's not feasible. Wounded. So how does one pull in work without anything to show for it? Well, what you're going to need is a whole lot of luck, a very cheap work rate and a ton of determination. And I had all three. You see, last year, I was actually very fortunate and I got to build some of the coolest cars I didn't think would be possible. Now, for me, like building this Corona, I'd never even seen one until I was asked to do it. This was done for Airlift Performance as a promotional video and I built a full custom bag kit for it. And I think the video speaks for itself. That is something else. That is such a cool piece of machinery. And I built that. And to be honest, if you ask me if I knew what I was doing, I'm gonna have to say no I was I was pretty much winging it and by the end of it I even impressed myself the amount of things I did in that car that I'd never even done before baffling I think I just took an approach of I need to make this work I need to prove myself and I did that and I'm really proud but there was one problem with that right having these customers cars in the workshop is a blessing like honestly but you're still limited to what the customer wants now if I want to showcase what I can actually do, I need to build something, something with no limits or budget and something that, you know, reflects me as a person. Bearing in mind at this point, I am still driving to these events, networking in my god awful caddy van, right? That is embarrassing. So early in 2024, I managed to pick up one of my dream cars, a BMW 635 CSI. <laughs> Arguably, this is the coolest BMW ever made and finally, after all these years, I had managed to scoop one. Now, there's a story behind this. In 2018, when I was working for some shady garage getting paid peanuts, I was offered a 635 CSI in red for £3,000. Now, obviously, I couldn't afford it back then and honestly, I kicked myself for years and years and years for never buying that car because the prices of the E24 now are literally like three or four times that and to buy one in the exact same spec five years later for the same price, I jumped on it. You do not get offered the same deal twice. I was not letting this one slip through my fingers once again. Now I know what you're thinking, what's any of this got to do with that E34? Hold on, you are about to find out. At the back end of 2023, just prior to the 635's arrival, I had literally just struck gold. Now, I have landed on something what all car enthusiasts dream of. A real proper barn find. None of this Forza Horizon stuff. This was the real deal. Now, inside, a Mark 1 Ford Sierra. Brown interior, wheel trims, the pinnacle of the base model. And of course, I took the opportunity to pull out my little iPhone and film everything that happened. And this was still in my very early days of YouTube and I was still trying to find my niche and what could push the channel. 
And to be honest, I had no idea what I was actually doing. And if I'd managed to scrape a thousand views on a video, that was literally like the best thing ever. I was still getting a good buzz from it, but that was it. I remember being so excited. I spent the entirety of the next day just fully editing this hour long special barn fight episode that we just created. And I hit upload at 5.30 and I'm thinking, this is gonna, this is gonna get 5,000 views, this one. This is gonna be crazy. And then to my surprise, in the hour, we had 20,000 views and it didn't stop there. It kept climbing, it kept climbing, it kept climbing. And naturally that brought in a lot of new eyes to the channel and they're watching what I'm doing. The build series is going well, everyone's coming back. And I just feel very fortunate to have been able to find that when I did. Well, you know, it was literally a two minute drive from the workshop. It'd been sat there for 40 years. We pulled it out, recommissioned it. And then in the end, we gave it away and Steve was the lucky winner. Congratulations, mate. You are a legend. Now at this point, there's a lot more eyes on me, the channel, and more importantly, the workshop. The videos on YouTube are directly pulling in customers left, right and center. And then all of a sudden, I am a very busy man. Now as nice of a problem that is to have, there's still one thing on my mind. And that is proving a point. I, I understand that that Mark 1 Sierra was very very good for me but at the end of the day it's not really me it's a stock car I've been modifying cars since I was a little boy I would literally lay in the kitchen with all my Hot Wheels cars laid out and pretend that I was in an episode of Fast and Furious and and then I would instantly just stand on them and collapse all suspension and then inevitably the cars would be useless because they wouldn't roll anymore and then I would go into the garage and I'd be drilling the axles higher and then I would instantly be going to the bench grinder and I'd be pushing the chassis into the bench grinder to give it just enough clearance for that car to roll along the ground and that is directly corresponded into the same person that I am today I'm literally all in on modified load cars and growing up in an era where stance works is quite literally everything it was inevitable that I was going to go down this path Oh, and a side note, he is currently building what I believe is going to be the best build you will ever see on YouTube in history. How are you ever going to top that? Now, it's been a running joke that I personally am going to get that F40 one day. And, it, you know, it's all a bit of a laugh, but Mike is literally doing exactly my dream. And how am I ever going to top that? I don't know. But respect to that man. Anyway, last week... Now I'm at the point where I just want to build the best E24 that I possibly can. And I'm talking rollover jig, restored inside and out, zinc all the underneath, mirrors under the car at the car show type of thing. And I want to showcase all of this on YouTube. And I know what it takes to build a car in that amount of time. So I went out and spent a ton of money in preparation for this. Bearing in mind, I still want to drive this car for summer. I really want to get this car done and dusted in about four or five months. And it was looking like I was still going to be able to do that until I get a call. An opportunity has come up. There is a bunch of BMWs that need a new home. They're abandoned and they need to be gone ASAP. At this point, I am skin. I've just bought the car lines for the E24 so I can build it around it. I've just spent a bunch of money on all the little details, which you don't even think about. But obviously, I've been doing this a long time now. So I thought I'll prepare myself so much for this build. It's going to be incredible. And then all of a sudden, I'm greeted with this great opportunity to create some amazing content and the potential to make a fair bit of money out of it. I'm skin. So I roped in my friend Lewis. We made a deal. We got four of them. We made a video retrieving them. And this is the second best performing video on the channel. I now have all my eggs in one basket. I have a workshop full of customers' cars. I've got about 10 projects of my own. And now all of a sudden, I've got four BMWs coming to the workshop that I somehow have to deal with in that time frame. Yeah, I think it was pretty clear that the E24 dream was not really going to happen. And I didn't want to cut any corners of it. I want this to be the best car that I could build. So simply just rushing it for the sake of rushing it, it's not going to happen. So naturally my head turned straight to the 525 with lewis wanted that touring and i wanted the white car for parts the e36 would have been sold and to be honest that 525 was in the bush they literally wanted us to get rid of it because they were building on site and if we didn't buy it the prices for the other cars would be more expensive so it was a no-brainer 
to make the time and effort to pull it out of the bush and take it home with us. And this is where it gets good because we had no expectation for this car. This car was in a bush. We thought it was going to be a rotten car. Its life expectancy was going to be short and we was going to be able to just part it out and get a couple of quid for it. However, that was completely wrong. We managed to clean this car up within the hour and it was very clear that this car was very good and the bones of it were almost perfect and we wasn't even sure why it was even parked up from the first place it didn't fail its mot it doesn't seem to have any rust why would somebody park this perfectly good car up and even when we got it on the ramp there was no surprises it just looked like a car that had been sat for a little bit it didn't even look bad the suspension was nice it wasn't even full of surface for us like the inner arch is cleaned up and it looked like brand new why was this car parked the only thing we didn't know was, does this car even run? Like, that must be why it's parked, surely, right? After replacing the fuel pump, removing the dodgy immobilizer, it fired into life like nothing had ever happened and it idled like a sewing machine we really hit the jackpot, right? Unfortunately, that was not the case. A few minutes after starting it up for the first time, we realized that the cooling system was pressurized and it was misfiring. It was very clear to see that this car had a head gasket failure and that was the only reason it was parked up. At the time that this car was parked up, a head gasket replacement would probably cost about triple the amount of what the car was valued back then. Of course they'd park it to the side. Yes, it's a good car, but it's really not worth it. Unsure of the reasoning why, we decided to rip the head off and inspect it and see if it was actually worth saving. And when you thought it couldn't get worse, it turns out the water jackets had rotted away. This would have been an expensive repair. This was putting coolant straight into the cooling system, but we could also see it coming down the side of the block. We didn't know what to do at this point. Luckily, through the power of the internet, a viewer reached out to me and messaged me said, Hey, look, I've got this cylinder head. It came off my E30. It was, it was in the car, fully refurbished for about four or 500 miles. And then all of a sudden, it came to MOT time and it found out that, you know, his E30 was an absolute rust bucket. Made the decision to scrap the car. Took, obviously, a bunch of bits of it. The cylinder head being one of them. He said, come and buy it, you can have it for a really good deal. And it was basically gonna cost me a fraction of the cost of what our current cylinder head was gonna to take to repair and get to the same standard. Looking like it was our best possible option, we took a punt on it. Now, after all, this car is the car I'm gonna be driving throughout summer. With deadlines being set and ferries booked, I had to get the car done, even if it's just for my own sanity. If I had to drive my caddy van to an event again, I think I'd have gone off the rails. And with that in mind, I set off to get the head and went all the way back to the workshop to spend the entire night getting the car done just so we could get away in it for the weekend. Which nearly didn't happen. For outbuilding cars, you learn a lot more and you learn better ways to do things. And you always end up going the extra mile to try and better this one. Because I'm always trying to better myself with every single project. But I'm also used to working against a tight deadline and in my mind I can still get everything done in that tight deadline but obviously naturally I'm adding so much more to that time frame so when it comes to that deadline it just gets harder and harder because you're throwing so much in there and it's just almost not feasible. And with a spare 12 hours between me and the MOT the car was done and I'd driven it out of the road and it felt pretty decent. All that was left now was to get an MOT and get down to Goodwood for Players Classic. This is the morning of the show, so I would be a late arriver. And with a fresh MOT and a stomach full of nerves, I actually set off to go down south. 150 mile journey for the first test drive? It's probably never going to end well, is it? But after setting my worries to a side, I was actually pleasantly surprised. The car was behaving and I'd done 100 miles and everything was great. And then I reached the M25 car park. Now... We have all been there. It's a terrible place. And for me, it was all going well until I got to a bunch of roadworks where the traffic was backed up for miles. And unfortunately, I had nowhere to stop. And I actually had to cut in front of a bunch of people to get into this very spot. And even then, I wasn't allowed to stay there. And 
I had to let it cool down for 20 minutes, but I had to get back on the dual carriageway to let the car cool down. And I just put it down for it not liking traffic. And in my defense, the temperature gauge didn't say it was in the red. It just said it was mildly warm, so I thought I was okay to carry on. How wrong was I? The car had literally cooked itself, lifted the head, lost all compression. That was that. That was the end of that engine. That engine was toast. All of my hard work had just gone in a matter of minutes. And it's safe to say, I don't think I'll be making that mistake anytime soon. That was probably one of the lowest points I had been in a very, very long time. Well, of course, it wasn't over yet. I loaded back on the low loader, got it back to the workshop, and obviously, I had to make a plan. Now, at this point, I am absolutely gutted. I have put hours and hours and hours into this car, and it just looked so good. Like... It looked rough around the edges, it was still kind of wearing it sort of like patina, but the wheels were shiny, it sat nice, it was such an achievement. And then all of a sudden, it just needs an engine. And the very next weekend, that's exactly what it got. With the engine found at what looks like the bottom of the sea, I had the boys over to help me strip the car down, remove the engine, swap all the ancillaries over, get it onto the new swamp engine, put it into the car, get it running, and have a big cheer. Ready? <laughs> oh, it sounds so good. That was the most important thing because we are going to Poland in a couple of days and we need to get a bunch of miles on this car before we even leave. Poland is a thousand miles away and we're attending Europe's biggest car show. I have a deadline and I'm the designated driver. This has to be done. And thankfully, it was. I even managed to get a chance to put a lot of miles on the car before we had to leave. The confidence for the car was absolutely tremendous and I felt like I could drive it anywhere. And with that in mind, we headed to Poland. And it's true, the BMW really is the ultimate driving machine. I mean, three months ago, this car was in a bush. And 2,000 miles later of trouble-free hassle at speeds you couldn't replicate in the UK? What more could you actually ask for? I feel like we're going into an era where a lot of these cars are just going straight to recycling center and no one's parking up their cars anymore. There's gonna be a point where any car that is parked up is just gonna be a plastic, horrible mess and it's, it's just not gonna be able to do the same journey as we've just done here with these 280s BMWs. And that could be a sour thought for the future, but I'm living in the moment and I've given this car a new lease of life and someone else can continue on with the story. Which is where the purpose of this video comes in. I am gonna be giving this car away and giving one of you guys a chance to build on the story that this car's already had. Now, I wish I could keep everything I've ever owned or built, but naturally you have to get rid of these things so you can progress further on. Now, I have grown to love this car. I have created a bond. This car has emotionally stressed me. And luckily it's been an escape to, you know, working hard in the workshop all week. You go out in this and it just brings a smile on my face. Like this is, this is such a cool car and the E34 in general has really ticked all the boxes for me. And the truth is the only other thing that I would do to this car would be make it slightly a bit faster. I mean, 
it doesn't need to be fast, but a little bit more pep in it would be good. It is a cruiser. It is reliable. It is honestly bulletproof at this point. We have changed so much on it. It bloody has to be. It's simple and effective, and I really want someone to be able to take this home for as little as £10 and literally continue on the story and put their own stamp on it. Which of course means the giveaway is going live. By the time this video is live, you'll be able to go over to gresswells.com. The link will be in the description. Go onto the website. You can buy a digital printout for this car and it will be one entry to the giveaway. There's merch on the website. You'll be able to do that on a pre-order basis and all of that merch will also get you entered for a chance to win this car as well. The design I've had made specifically for this giveaway is absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm gonna put the link of the gentleman that actually drew it for me. He is Gary Oshi on Instagram. I'll put his link in the description. He is one talented guy and he's really brought my ideas to life and I think it really represents me as a person and obviously the car as well. The giveaway is going to be open for a month. It will be limited to 1,000 tickets. Last time we did the Sierra, we actually limited it to 500 tickets. And then a lot of people missed out because we sold out, which obviously car in demand. I am sure that we won't reach 1,000 tickets, but the option is there if we do go over that 500 threshold again. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be pulling this car apart, fixing anything that it does need. Anything that I didn't change before, we're going to finalize it on this. The rear subframe bushes have got to be redone after the last 10,000 miles or so they have slightly deteriorated so we're going to put a fresh set in there and of course the wheels will be coming off the car unfortunately i know it will disappoint a lot of people but as you remember in the start of this story those wheels are for my e24 and they will always be for my e24 and one of the reasons why you don't want them is because i can't drive and i actually bent them so they're no good anyway the video of this car has taken me an age and you can probably tell I put a lot more effort into it. All my recent videos have a lot more effort put into it. Let me know what you think about this one. Did you like story time? Was it too much? Was I rambling? Just let me know. I enjoyed making it and I hope that reflects in the video. We'll see. I haven't actually edited it yet, obviously, because I'm filming it right now. But yeah. Thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, you're all legends. Go pick up some merch. Go pick up your tickets. Best of luck. Stay tuned. We'll be putting some more videos out on this car on the channel very, very soon. So thank you all very much. You're the best. See you later. Goodbye.